Okay, tonight to our um, draw to city council agenda for regular city council meeting Tuesday, October the 6th, 2020, 6.30 p.m. Um, tonight, the invitation will be by Reverend uh, Perry Kelly. Good value here, Mr. Kelly. Let us pray. Now, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings on our life, Father. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for another beautiful day. Father, we thank you for the time that we've taken here tonight to gather the city, the leaders here tonight, to gather here to make decisions to better this city, Lord. We pray for them, that you would bless them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We pray that you would bless them with unity on the decisions that they make for this community. Father, we pray for this community and all that we do, help us to honor you, help us to give you glory, magnify you, and lift you up with everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. City Council meeting on 9 1 Standing committees, uh, going to downtown revitalization association. This is Rock. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The downtown revitalization association has resumed our monthly member breakfasts at 8 a.m. on the last Thursday of the month at Taki's Diner. Businesses meet, network, and provide feedback on potential projects and events. The breakfast is free for DDRA members and $5 for others to go towards the meal. Our final networking breakfast for 2020 will be held Thursday, October 29th at 8 a.m. at Taki's Diner. We also presented three $250 cash prizes to the winners of our Eat Local Contest. Thank you to everyone who participated. Let's keep it up and keep our dollars flowing in our local economy. With that mindset, we will continue to encourage shoppers to keep their money in Darlington with our annual Holiday Shop Darlington Contest. We have some of the entry forms on your tables there, and there's some at the entrance to the Recreation Department. Uh, basically, all you have to do is shop at five different businesses between Thanksgiving and Christmas, which will be easy to do, and send in your receipts with an entry form, and you have a chance to win one of three $100 cash prizes. And of course, the more you shop, uh, the more entries you can put in. Uh, there's no limit to the number of entries that you can have. Um, the only thing that doesn't count is um, fuel, because we want you to stay in town. Uh, 
prescriptions and um, but restaurants do count. Um, and you can find more information on the contest at buildupdarlington.org slash shopdarlington. Now due to the governor's executive order regarding COVID-19 and social distancing, the DERA has been forced to cancel several of our events for 2020, including the Bringing Downtown Alive concerts, Scare on the Square, and our Shop Small Downtown Open House. Uh, the board has also suspended all our improvement grants until such time that we can resume our fundraising efforts. However, in the meantime, we continue to promote Darlington and its businesses on social media and through our news alert system each week. We reach over 2,700 people through those avenues. We continually update our webpage, buildupdarlington.org, where individuals can submit information or sign up to receive these alerts. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All right, also the Greater Darlington Chamber of Commerce, Nancy Matthews. Thank you for this time, and again, thank you all for your service to your community. Um, before I begin, I want to remind everyone what the mission of the Chamber of Commerce is, and it's the same mission for many chambers of commerce. It's to promote business, to be the voice of business, and to bring value to the community. So, that is everything we do, is to promote those things. Now, we've been fortunate, even in this um, environment, to have four new members. Um, one is M&M Operations and Gertis Academy. M&M Operations has been on North Main Street, which is called Guy and Runner. And many of you were at the ribbon cutting that we held. Thank you for being there. Um, we have a good crowd. Uh, Vertis Academy is a charter school that is on the county line of Florence and Darlington. And there are many Darlington County students that go there as, as well as Florence County students. And so that was a very positive gathering and a very positive uh, place in our community. Dr. R.D., DNS Communications, and Habitat for Humanity are also new members. So um, we, we live to serve the members and the community. Um, in addition to that, we have a, an existing member who is considering a business after hours at the end of October, you know, assuming we can do that with, with social distancing and massive. That would be for the announcement of the We are still planning on Fright Fest October 31st. And you recall that that is because we were unable to do Freedom Fest. Uh, Fright Fest is planned for 2 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. There will be food trucks, there will be arts and crafts, there will be bingo, uh, there will be uh, carnival rides, uh, trunk or treat, and, and all within the Department of Commerce's guidance for social business. So we are planning on that. We appreciate the city's support. We think it will be a, a, a nice time, and we hope you will get your family and friends to Any questions or comments? Worked out 
and um, you know, given any something way unforeseen that would take place. And there is a Halloween. I'm sorry. It is a Halloween Saturday. Saturday, October thirty first. So there will be trunk or treat. Uh, we hope that that will be an opportunity for kids to uh, participate in Halloween. For some, uh, many churches do that too, but but we do have churches participating. And even though it's not recommended to do trick or treat this year, we think we can maybe manage that with this distancing. And by the way, it won't just be on the square. It's going to be spread out so that we can comply with. to appear before council, five minutes each. Uh, Dolores Bess, the PD Coalition. Council, the donor of the old day of gifts on the kids, anything about the donor, 
which will allow the fund to serve those who will be most impacted by the rate increase. In addition, we believe that this amount could also be applied to shut off fees or pass balances for out eligible citizens. While $30 may seem a small amount, it is appropriate that the fund serves many citizens with a reprieve commensurate with the yearly increase. At the, hub, at the public hearings on the rate increase, the overwhelming concern was that the increase will not be able to be accounted into already strained budgets. This fund would help stabilize those budgets. No one in Darlington should have to choose between paying their water bill or buying groceries. Eligibility requirements. We believe that senior citizens on fixed incomes and families living at or below 125% of the federal poverty guidelines should be the primary recipient of these funds. Eligibility can be ascertained through tax return information or other phone runs that aid received, perhaps school lunch reduction rates. Residents behind on water shutoff fees should also be able to apply under the same eligibility of requirements. Distribution considerations. While an interest earning startup fund would be ideal, we believe it is more likely that funds will be applied each month to eligible accounts, zeroing out the fund each month, unless we can raise more than we need. If this is the case, we'll keep squir squirreling it away until it is needed. Two models for consideration, applying funds to accounts most in need or spreading funds across all eligible accounts equally. Both have their benefits and their drawbacks, and those with a better handle on the number of accounts and the severity of the debt will have more insight, I'm sure. Benefits for the city. A well-publicized and well-funded account for a water bill relief will demonstrate to the citizens of Darlington and beyond that the city is addressing infrastructure issues while also recognizing that the city has a role in helping mitigate the financial hardships this will cause our most at-risk, underserved residents. It's also good public health policy to ensure access to running water. If this can help residents keep the water running, it should be enacted, supported, and promoted. And the last email or comment that we received um, from Gracie Lodge. She is 85 years old and lives on a fixed income from Social Security. The mere fact that the county has increased her water bill by $30 to repair streets that has nothing to do with the flooding in her community or area, Main Street near IGA, Chestnut, and Chesamine. So what residential areas is the city looking out for? The people didn't vote you in to raise their taxes and water bills. They voted you in to help the city not to do more harm and raise water bills and sewer fees. These same senior citizens and lower income residents are the same ones who came out and voted for someone whom they thought was gonna do the city of Darlington some good. Who's looking out for the senior citizens? Who's looking out for the lower income residents, not the mayor of the city of Darlington? Grace and Pete And that's the last comment we received. Okay, thank you. All right, unfinished business. Uh, second reading, ordinance 2020-18, general obligation bond, $400,000. Any discussion on that? I make a motion that we approve the second reading of ordinance 2020-18, our general obligation bond, $4,000, $400,000. Proceed your second. Okay. All right. Um, Vic, um, Brian? Aye. Mrs. Backus? Aye. 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 Okay. It's passed. Thank you. All right. Uh, unfinished business. Public hearing ordinance 2020 19, annexation 325 North Main Street. Please. If there's any public comments about it, you can come up also. I have not received any public comments on this issue. Um, this is a property adjacent to the city of Darlington. Uh, two people live in the household, and it is along North Main Street where it is frequently in and out as we go along. Uh, and the person wants to uh, hook into our, it, actually both, this person has city surrounding them, so it would certainly make sense to good. annex them. All right, any other public comments? All right, very good. Okay. All 
Are we just close the public hearing on that? Thank you, Lisa. All right, uh, second reading ordinance 2020-19, annexation 325 North Main Street. Any discussion on that? Okay, do we have a motion? We go ahead and vote the second reading on the ordinance 20 20 19 and section 325 North Main Street. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Blaine? Yes. Hi. Mrs. Baggins? Aye. Mr. Aye. Okay. Aye. All right, thank you. It passes. business. Uh, first reading, Ordinance 2020-20, leasing the Carnegie Library to the Darnton County Library, to the Darnton County. Mr. Gardner. Howard. I say girl. Carl, I don't mean to say girl. Hey, Mr. Girl, you open that up. approached us with um, possibly half a year ago about using the uh, Carnegie Library uh, just for a brief history for the Carnegie Library. It was built in 1920 uh, by some citizens and it turned out that it raised $10,000 locally and a gift from the Andrew Carnegie uh, Foundation for $10,000. Uh, the addition was made in the 1950s. It served as the county's library from 1988 when they moved uh, to the hill off right up the hill on North Main Street. Since 1988, it's been owned by the school district twice, the county twice, and the city twice. And we've had it since 1999. We got grants um, through Sen uh, Senator Joe Malloy, Representative D Denny Nielsen, Congressional uh, uh, Congressman John Spratt to refurbish the library. We spent $700,000 in city funds and grants to do that. We essentially mothballed the facility, waiting for a day like this when someone would come along and want to use it. The county has promised to finish it uh, interior wise and exterior, and they will pay the parking lot. And the stipulations uh, are listed there uh, that they will be financially responsible for all innovations to the library. Exterior improvements to the library must be approved by City of Darlington. The county will be responsible for all utilities. They'll pay the parking lot, as I mentioned. They'll make it available for community meetings as needed. They'll maintain the proper property and liability insurance for the front of the library. Darlington County went one lump sum lease payment in the amount of fifty dollars, which would be for fifty years through the year twenty seventy. Now we have added something in there uh, after the year twenty sixty. Darlington County has the option to purchase the Carnegie Library for one dollar. That says it's currently proposed, but uh, this is a win-win for everybody. Um, they will use the building to fix it up. They're also planning to look at uh, locating the uh, utilities underground on that block, which is a win for everybody also. So this will be and a compliment to what they're doing with the courthouse and it'll dovetail also with the historic commission improvements for their building. The utilities on that block include uh, by Caroline Bank, the correct? Or? I believe it will go from the, from their block across to um, the Carnegie building. I haven't seen any plans for the shed, it's just been talking about it. We've also been talking about putting up some electric charging stations on the park site, uh, site also. And that building's been empty for 34 years. Any questions or discussion? Lane? Oh, okay. I make a motion that uh, we approve. I would like to discuss a little bit. The last line, um, after year 2060, Johnson County has option to purchase the current library. Well, they're going to be putting them out. How much? In?
whatever you want to do with them. I'm fine with it. I mean, it's like I said, it says it has sat there for 34 years. Um, they're going to they're use it, allow us to still be part of it, park there. Um, I think it's kind of a win. I think it is a win. It's Probably going to be able to still not, not deteriorate and be a plus. So they'll, they'll definitely keep it up. No, I mean, the whole idea behind this is just wonderful. I love it. Um, just, it's hard for me to swallow getting the building away for a dollar, I guess. We can strike that last one if you want to. I mean, let me, uh, there's one thing I forgot to mention too. The county is looking at permeable asphalt for that site too. It'll help the stormwater mitigation. How are we not getting this started? Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, historically, you would know more than, I guess, the rest of us. John Seegers, you've been out here for a while. What do we do historically in these situations? So, at the end of the last line, I was saying, the year 2060, Johnson County has the option to purchase the Carnegie Library for a dollar. I'm just curious, historically, you know, what we have done or other municipalities. Um, it's just hard for me to swallow. Well, there, there are 15 Carnegie Libraries still standing in the state of South Carolina. There are, are a few that are used as libraries. Lana is a good example of it, kind of like the one that we have. Others are used, I think, in Camden, they have it as a museum. There's been many different uses. Sometimes, sometimes the county ends up with them. Sometimes the city ends up with them, sometimes they revert to private ownership. So this is a way to keep it in the public trust and to ensure that it sticks around because by the end of this agreement, that building would be 140 years old. But like I say, it's their problem just to strike that part out because, as we mentioned earlier, this is a win-win for everybody involved. And I don't think most of us will be around in the year 2060. And, and it can be decided by another county council and another city council. Do we harm the agreement? I don't think so. Okay. We can make a motion to approve it uh, minus that part. So we take that out. There is no purchase at all. They just assume. No, they just wouldn't have the option. They just have to renegotiate. Just have to renegotiate in 50 years. Kind of what I think is close to that is this building. It was an armory in 1970, but the city and county shared it. It was given to the city in 1979 when they moved out on the bypass or on uh, Highway 151. And the county has used this building for 40 plus years. Um, and the rent they pay is cheap by this standard. I think it's the fridge one is it or not? $150. $150 a month. So eventually, we're not going to have a need for two gyms, or we're going to put a new gym out on the 151. What's going to happen to this building? Is that we'd have to go and find a contract. We'd have to look and see. It's the only thing that I can think of that's similar to that, because we've got a newer building over there. It's A.W. Stanley Gym, and we're going to be building out on the past the racetrack. So this is the only building I can think of that would be even close to what we're looking at in front of the other. People, people of goodwill can agree on keeping a, a building in the public trust for public use. I guess we'll have to see what they do in 50 years. Okay, just want to make a motion to agree with, like, to approve it other than uh, the last line. I'm just one vote. Uh, I'm just, I'm just asking this question. Does anybody else want to make the motion to approve it without that? You are asking that we can leave this out. I'm yes. not necessarily asking that. I mean, um, I hope the building stays in public trust, but 50 years from now, they're going to have the option to buy it for a dollar and sell it. They like to do whatever they choose. How, how long have we had it? We've had it since 1999. And we've had it almost 21 years, and it's just sat there. It's been in the empty for 34 years. I get it. Everything else I love about it is just, it, just. Yeah, I'm, it's up to y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they're taking it and there won't be another any buildings at my corner. And it's going to essentially like sustain the public, you know, interest here so that it will, it will be kept up. So, as long as my family went out here, as long as they have it here until they decide to sell it, Until that time, they have been maintaining it. 
They have until 2070. They have until 2070 to lease it. So until 2070 to lease it, he was he wrote in here at 2060 that they could purchase it for a dollar. Right. But I'm just saying, up until that point, which is 40 years from now, it's been on them. They have been it's a total responsibility for that building to stay. Correct. So I think it's only right that they have the right to do what they want. <laughs> That's there. I mean, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, that's there. Yeah. So how? Uh, in the last uh, 40 years, how much money have you put into that building? $700,000 so, in 20 years. Yes. And how much have you gained from the building? Nothing. Exactly. So I don't see the problem with letting them use the building, maintain the building, keep the building up. You done threw away $700,000 and got nothing out of it. I don't see what the issue is. And the $700,000 came from where? Grants? $125,000 in the state of South Carolina, $149,000 in the state of American Treasury's grant from Congressman John Spratt. The rest came from funding from the city of Darlington. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fine with it the way it is, but. Uh, and I'm happy. He said, I'm, I'm more than thrilled that it's going to be taken care of and not go to waste. Again, if they want to say maintain it for 40 to 50 years, they go put a lot of money into it. In my opinion, they should have the right to buy it for a dollar. Be, be happy that they've got it. Y'all decide. They're going to be keeping it up in 50 years. I'm fine with that. They'll have a new beautiful use. Well, I think the motion that we approve the first reading. Ordinance 2020-20 to the lease Carnegie Library to Darlington County. Second. Aye. Mr. Gardner? Aye. Ms. Bagus? Aye. Mr. Nittles? Aye. Okay. Aye. All right, so that passes. Thank you, Darlington County. All right, and thank you, City Council. All right, first reading Ordinance 2020-21, commercial uh, refuse uh, container fees. Good evening, my name is Um, can you hear me? Um, back when we were doing our budget work session, y'all should have a copy of this spreadsheet? Okay, all right. When we were doing our budget work session, uh, I believe I included this. And we went over it when I did my presentation, we went over it, talked about it. Uh, but anyway, when we were doing the voting on the new fees, somehow or another the uh, commercial stuff got left out. So uh, I talked to Howard and we decided that we might want to present it to council. Because when you look at some of the rates that we're being charged and some of the rates that we're charging, Especially on your two yards and some of your four yards, we're actually losing money on them. Uh, and I feel like that we need to at least adjust the, the fees so that we can at least break even, if not make a little bit of money off of it. Uh, so that's what we're doing. You got it? I lost it. And I still need time. I'm you, you need one? I'll keep on the presentation, sir. Okay. All right. So, anyway, that's what I'm coming to you tonight for is to, uh, I guess, answer any questions you may have about this uh, and see what we need to do to move forward with it. If we want to keep it the way, the way it is, we can, we can continue to lose some money. Or if we want to increase the fees, we can increase them and at least break even or make a little bit of money. Any questions? Oh, okay, I see. Uh, says one time, one X, two X, three X. What that is, is if you hit like the two yard, just going across the top, two yard, we have 14 dumpsters that are dumped once a week. We're being charged $41.49 
a month for those dumpsters, and we're charging thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. We have uh, two dumpsters that we're dumping twice a week that are two yards, and we have three dumpsters that we're, we're dumping three times a week that are two yards. We don't offer a lot of two yards just for the simple fact that that's where we lose the most of our money in. Um, so um, that's how that's how you read it. Two, two X, or one X, two X, three X, it's two times a week, one time a week, three times a week. So realistically, on your two yards, all of those we're losing, um, except for the three containers that are dumped three times for making about seven dollars. That's right. The four yards, you have 26 containers, um, and we're losing 59 cents on those. That's right. The six and eight yards, pretty much all that, we're actually sure. making some money. But if you look at the six, let's see, the six yards, for example, you have 11 of those containers. You're currently charging $75. We're being charged $60, so the city's only making $15. That's right. And we have other fees. We get charged, the city gets charged if um, they move the dumpster. Um, Whenever we deliver the dumpster, if they have to get a new one or if it's a new business, we get charged a delivery fee if they pick it up because the business closed, we get charged for that. And in the past, I don't think that's charges that's been passed on to the customer. I mean, if they leave, they close down, it's kind of hard to pass that charge on to them. Uh, so that's the charge that we have told them. I think it's 125 dollars But they do charge delivery charges and they do charge if they have to move one because it's not a good location or whatever. So. so say that one more time now. So if I if I get a dumpster. Yes sir. If you and get a dumpster, I, I close down. And you close down. When we call Ally or Republic and tell them we need them to pick that dumpster up, they charge us to come out and pick that dumpster up. Okay. 125. 125 dollars. And at that at that point you don't collect the 125 dollars. There's no way to collect it because the customers well, wouldn't it be, is, would we need to make a, a proposal to put that as an upfront fee? They could, well, be, refunded, I mean, they could be refunded back to them or? You know. That's kind of some of the reason why we kind of increase the fees so that we can put a little money in the bank so if we have to, you know, have one picked up and we've got the money to cover or whatever. Like on a, on a residential, we're charging twenty eight fifty now, correct? Yeah, we're charging how much, twenty-eight fifty. How much does the city make on that? Because we we dump that, correct? Yeah, we dump that. Uh, I know we got the expense of our people, but we got expense of people truck. And we don't pay tipping fees on residential. And on twenty-eight on twenty-eight fifty, what does it cost us to dump that? I don't know exactly. I mean, do you have an idea what we're making on a twenty-eight on a resident? Probably twenty-eight fifty covers that covers your trash and yard debris. Uh, huh? Yeah. So I mean that's I'm that's not all the one the I'm saying we make maybe fifteen dollars off of says the ballpark maybe. I don't know that you I mean that's that's our primary source of income. And when you look at our primary source of income, if you look at how much we're bringing in and how much we're actually it's costing to run the department, we're still in the red. So I don't know if we're really making anything by the time you look at the whole picture. I'm just saying you got fourteen containers that you're that you're charging the for the recycling charging forty five dollars now and um, they charge us forty four thirty five so we're losing on that. Um, you got me lost what are you when you get down to recycle for the city you got fourteen uh, containers yeah. forty five dollars and they're charging us forty four thirty five so we're, we're breaking even we're making no money. Um, you're making no money on four yards, 26 containers. You're losing money on 14 containers. So there's 20, 30, 40, 54 containers that we're either losing money or breaking even on. Uh, 11 containers that we're only making $15 on the side six yard. Just looking at those first ones here, that first row. So. I'm, I'm, 
I don't have a problem saying I'm the one that brought this up and caught the attention because when I first started, I noticed that some of the containers, before Alex took it over, uh, some of the containers at locations that were just sitting there were, I think the city was still being built for, correct? That's right. And from a, some of the places that were empty. The business had moved, two or three months later, the container was still sitting there, and then it came to our attention that, hey, we're, you know, we're paying for that, and then we looked and well, we're losing money on a good number of these, so something needs to be done, because uh, we're not in the business to lose money, we're in the business to uh, make money, but we're in the business to be proactive with what we make so that we can make our city better, and it takes money to do that. And with these businesses, you know, we're, a lot of them are getting the trash picked up, and it's costing the city to do that. Any further discussion? All right, do we have a motion to um, pass this? That's already gone. The 28 people are the Republic charges it. Okay. The residential that, that's already that's already been increased, correct? Yeah. But you have already been proved. I mean, we didn't we didn't address the commercial roll carts, and we didn't address the commercial recycling. Uh, we can address that now, or we can address it at a later time. It's whatever you want to do. I, I will say that the commercial recycling we don't have. We've got 35 carts. Uh, we were paying plus mud eleven dollars and fifty cents a car, and we're not charging a dime for it. So we were going to go all the way around. Now we've taken it over. We're doing it ourselves in house. But this is a, this is along with your proposal, correct? The commercial roll carts. We can. I mean, if we want to talk about commercial roll carts, we can talk about those in the commercial side. Well, that's, I mean, it's all together. It's all the same this, sheet. Like I said, this, is, this is the spreadsheet that yeah. I submitted whenever we were doing right. the. Uh, the uh, budget purposes. Take more time. So section one says that the city of Darlington wants to increase the commercial revenues dumpster charges per the attached fee sheet. I understand that it says commercial, but you still got a whole bunch of other charges. It says commercial container fees. Yeah, but your attached sheet still has a part of the language of trash. But a residential has already been approved. Yeah. Yeah. So the commercial recycling down here at the bottom. I went over all of this whenever we were doing the budget work session. Yeah. Whenever yeah. rates were being approved, those were not approved. They were they were left out. Exactly. So. together back first of the year so I we submitted this to Howard. I mean I could have taken everything off the bottom if you wanted that you know you wanted to well that's that's what's the record. commercial roll cards for some commercial this is public record I mean we just need to be a little bit cleaner on homework I guess I'll say well I mean he's got on, he's got on we get on their commercial fees Anything to that tonight. Correct. 
No, I'm saying that we can't. I would, I, would, yeah. I would say that we do it because that's all included. When he came here tonight, we weren't planning on doing anything with it. Am I wrong? No. Okay. No, no, no. I'm not wrong with that. So right. what I'm saying is it's down here on the bottom, and you got it clearly right. Rip it. If you go to the first page and look at that actual law and ordinance in your path, and it's suggesting the fine or rate increase on the following page. But there's rate increase on the following page. is how we voted for the residential off of the same sheet with the same information. I'm not so what I'm saying is, if we did it at that time, we didn't vote on commercial then, but it was listed just like it. But if we voted on the residential part of it, this time we are voting the same information, but now we are going to commercial. That's all this is. Which would include, and we can spell it out, all dumpster sizes and charges, all roll carts for commercial, commercial recycling, is what needs to be approved. Because the residential has already been approved. I wish we could do that, but I don't think we can. Cause don't you have to roll sizes? But we did that before. This is the same thing. He's asking to include the recycling. So he said, did we advertise for recycling? Or are you saying we did that and we did the work session in the way? I'm saying when we voted, when we passed it for the residential, the same language over here included residential and didn't have all of these things on the on, on here. And same thing we're doing now, we did it for a residential. It's not different. I'm just going to And we really need to pass it. I've got no problem passing the commercial side of the ball, just We're attaching the second page. I think it should be a little bit more specific, I guess, if not long. Right. If you would like to pass the dumpster tonight, I would more than happy to come back to you next month with a commercial roll box and commercial recycling. So I'm not here. Raise the taxes. I don't think ever makes anybody happy. Um, but I got no problem with the commercial recycling doing that next month. I'd rather do that, I guess. So you're just you're saying because in section one it just says a uh, dumpster charges, it should say dumpster and recycling. I just wish section one was a carbon copy of what it lists as defined, I guess. So section one should just have, you know, the dumpsters that, that, he, that we just discussed. It shouldn't have anything below it. This is great for a work session, but not for an ordinance or a law in my mind. It's sloppy. Um, and if we're going to attach the commercial recycling, I think we have to wait a month and we have to actually publicize it. If I'm not mistaken. Whatever y'all want to do. No, I mean, that's the law. It's not what we want to do. It's the law. Right? Don't we have to publicize that fee, fee increases? Kevin Henry? Kevin Henry? Howard, can you answer that? Yeah, we, we do. We do. I just, I was just, I don't know, legal questions. I was going to work together. Yeah. So, I'm fine. I guess what I'm asking is the second page to, whenever we produce it for the minutes, that we delete all the stuff that doesn't relate to it. Is that fair? Can you do that? That's fine. Just come back and do it next time. No, you don't have to go back. I think we can pass it. Just literally, you're our clerk, I guess. <laughs> That's what the question is, too. I mean, we can't just amend it to say dumpster and recycling. I don't think anything needs to be amended. I think we can just pass it as needed. I mean, I'm not, not a lawyer, but I just don't think we need to have all this extra stuff up here that has nothing to do with it. Because it specifically says in the, you know, the first page, section one, I guess, the um, charge for the attached 
speed schedule. And the state of that speed schedule should just be indicative of what we're actually passing and nothing else. I don't think that's that difficult. I'm not trying to be difficult. Um, it should be simple. Figures. Okay. So, just change that first sentence up there where it says commercial refuse dumpster feed, say dumpster and road car feed. You say a commercial dumpster and road car feed. I think that just gets in less, one less month with all um, fees. So, you can't do that unfortunately because we haven't um, advertised those other things, you know, made it public and advertised it for everybody. Let me ask you something. I would see on, on, on this, I'm just looking at it, it doesn't refer to the tax sheet that is for our information. So take the, take the back sheet off and we don't have to talk. The front seat doesn't make sense without it the back sheet. But it's, I mean, it does I mean, that's have just for us. If you read section one, it says changes for the attached fee schedule. Without the attached fee schedule, it's just kind of. Because that same fee schedule is attached to our residential, the one we already have. the same sheet. How about this? I'll make it real simple. <laughs> Take a pair of scissors, cut the sheet off above the monthly totals. And it's fine. All right. It'd take me all of about three seconds on my computer to delete that bottom part. Exactly. It's not a big deal to me, what? And then send that sheet to Ms. Gloria, and I think everything's good. And it's all the time. So you want to delete the, the roll card stamp? Just everything below, because it has no relation to the ordinance. That's all I'm asking. There's no relation. Um, so the only thing is these two commercial and commercial inside. That should show up on here, is what you're saying. We're just going to do dumpster tonight. And we'll come back next month and do the roll parts and the, and the commercial side, correct? Well, that's correct, because you've only advertised the fee increase for the commercial property, correct? Have you advertised anything else? I haven't advertised anything. I gave it the, yeah, the highlight, so I mean. You're talking on behalf of the ordinance, so have we advertised anything? For this, we have done. No, we have. So, so you can only pass one thing. And we legally can only pass one thing. That's when we get sued. So, yeah, just take a pair of scissors. Is it bottom line? Bring your document up. Make sure it doesn't work. So, do you make a motion to pass? Yes, sir, I'd be happy to. I apologize for slowing me down. Do you make a motion? Mr. Gardner, do you make a motion to pass the first reading ordinance 2020-21 commercial refuse container fees with the attached form minus the second sheet from roll card stamp? I would be happy to motion to pass that ordinance as a state. Second. Sigurds. Mr. Sigurds. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Mr. Nettles. Aye. Aye. Thank you. So I'm coming back next month for the rest of it, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. I ain't no problem. I was going to argue. I don't know this time. Oh, yeah. Well, it's fine. No, he's, this is, uh, he's straight. It's just, it didn't say that on there, so we'll leave it We're good. Right. Now, boy. Uh, All right. Yeah, boy. Yes, ma'am. This is a comment. I want us, uh, along with this, we're having such a problem in some of the areas that is, is in my ward, where people dump, um, um, dump in furniture and all kinds of things that we're trying to real hard to monitor. Um, one of my neighbors did see someone put that out. Is there any way that we can maybe invest in some kind of camera surveillance? So, I don't know how we can stop this, but we are having a problem and, and folks are coming to me. And one lady, she was just so, kind of scared because she was by herself and she saw it. And I told her that I was hoping that she, uh, she called me. I did try to call an officer, but of course they don't buy that time. Uh, and 
she didn't get a license number. What can you know along with this? Along with this. I mean, there is a, there is the uh, chance that we could purchase a, a deer camera if we know that. There was a street, I'm not going to name it, yeah, we know right. there were cross departments. We had a lot of a lot of uh, activity that was specific spot over and over and over that were uh, chances that we could buy a 50 to $100 deer camera and stick it up somewhere if they call us and say it's a constant, constant situation where maybe we could get someone that way as possible. I just, want to, I just want to kind of put it out here and see as a discussion sometime. Yeah. Because I think that would be good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, new business, uh, the Baldwin Gym Rental for Circuit Court. Howard. Due to COVID-19, uh, Darlington County is, is looking for a place to hold court uh, during the, uh, the twice monthly meeting that we have with Park the City Manager and Darlington County Administrator. I had offered uh, use of Baldwin Gym and they brought the court report, Scott Suggs over the look and they agreed. You can see some of their uh, furniture over here, which they've been using before they started court last week. Um, so they might be used the uh, Baldwin gym for up to six months and still out into just a three paragraph uh, agreement that we have with the county. They would pay us $750 a month, plus the cost of utilities for use of the building no more than six months, and that would have started as of October 1st. I believe that we talked about this on the phone with everybody, and everybody seemed to be okay with it. So it's helping the county out of the situation. Uh, it's again short term. If it was to be revisited later in the spring, we'd have to look at, at new terms. And plus, if we still have to do this in spring, we're in a world of hurt. Okay. Any more discussion? All right, do we make a motion? I make a motion that we approve the ball with Jim Rental for the circuit court. I'll second that. Mr. Sigurd? Ms. Backus? Aye. Mr. Nettles? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. All right, uh, e sports proposal on uh, Brandon Jet. Soccer, 
they're trying basketball, they're trying baseball. And then you got kids that are interested in sports that are coming over to this world and learning the computer side. Right. Um, so the good thing about it is that we're not only offering a sport, we're offering something that the kids can take into the future. They can learn, learn how to build computers. We offer them something in the future where they can have a job. Um, right now, Copa is offering $40,000 scholarships to play esports. That's just to go play video games. You can get a forty thousand dollars scholarship to Um Once we get all this set up, um, everything falls into our court because we're eligible for STEM grants, um, math and science, other math and science grant, and it all pays for itself. Um, Nathan Dorsey told me that he had sponsors that never was interested in sponsoring anything, sponsoring esports because. A lot of these people who own business, businesses and stuff, their kids are not interested in sports. They might not be in social. So they're going to invest in what their kids are interested in. Computer programming, trying to get to play games and stuff like that. Um, right now, Florence has a match schedule when COVID is in. They're going to play a virtual match to get to Los Angeles. And he's selling this to all the companies and he's telling them it's going to be on like a YouTube channel. If you go on YouTube, they have a YouTube channel. And he's selling the businesses like this. You can see Forest County and your business out of Forest County on YouTube playing against Los Angeles. Um, if you look at the code uh, line items, everything on these codes is from the commute, commute, um, computer mod monitors to the modems, the game chairs, the switch. Everything is you ready to rock and roll. Um, from start to finish, and it's this recorded from HTD. That's how um, the city's um, internet people, and I'm just told that that's what we had to go to because they maintain our server. So they'll be the one working on the program and keeping the computers up. Um, another safety thing is it has a firewall, so it's not like Fortnite where somebody can come in and talk to your kids and have sexual predators. It's um, they have a firewall. And what Nathan was telling me is they have keywords. If something pops up, it hits the firewall and not don't allow it. So somebody from China can't come in and try to talk to their kids, or somebody from Canada can't come in and try to, you know, you know, have a pedophile trying to talk to the kids. Everything is firewall is protected. Um, it's very safe. In a time like this, esports is probably the only thing we can do during the pandemic because it's you can be social distant, you don't have to shut down, you can play teams all over the United States, right here from Dallas. Um, right now, city of Charleston is stopped tapping into it. Lawrence, St. Andrews, um, city of Greenville. And he told me he had about 20 other visitors have scheduled to come to Florence to look at his program so they can start. So once we start up, and we do start up, that our kids can have be seen all over the United States, all over the county. Um, they have, he has a event scheduled when COVID ends. The U.S. Army is going to come in and bring their team into the Civic Center. The U.S. Army has a whole uh, esports team. And they're going to bring the whole set up into an arena and set the Civic Center up as an arena. And they're going to have a arena event with all the games. So it's worldwide. And I just learned this talking to Nathan. The number one. Um, Esports technology company in Quinn. It's called Arthur. Um, he said that they're looking to invest and help and get stuff out. So there's a lot of people looking to invest. So I'm asking you today. Um, this complete quote is about comes up about thirty-six thousand dollars, almost thirty-seven thousand dollars. So that's set up. That's ready to go. It's a one-time fee. Um, after that, the program kind of pays for itself, but we don't have to come back and keep asking for money. Um, he, Florence helps us with everything because they're trying to venture out and get everybody set up. So they're willing to come in, help us with sponsorships, help us find sponsorships. Right now, they're selling sponsorships for like a thousand dollars. And he said that he don't have a problem getting it. Whenever I was talking to you earlier, um, you mentioned how they, I guess they use this system 
And then after they have their class or whatever we call it, um, they'll have playtime on like their Xbox or PlayStation or that kind of, um, I guess, units. And that's what they do over in Florence. Yeah. Um, I know those aren't included in the quote. But you, since you're getting those rights, you had those rights. Yeah, I got it. Um, what Florence does is because they have so many kids. So what they do is the games are basically set up in the team. It's either 4 v 4v4, 5v5, or 6v6. So he might have 12 kids in a session, they might play a 5v5. So what they did is they went and bought PlayStations and Xbox. Um, and what they do is to keep kids always busy. They, the kids can go over and play the PlayStation while the other kids are doing this, and then they swap out. That's where everybody gets the time to play. So, so you know, you do get to play the games that everybody playing, like Fortnite and stuff like that. But it's more for the adults. Um, they do have adults come in and play. And the way they get the adults to come in and play is they admit they are uh, volunteer. And they have a coach. So you might have a game that's a coach. I mean, Brian, you might be a gamer, um, but you want to volunteer. That's the way you can get in the game and help kids and teach them how to get. So the volunteers be uh, screened. Everybody from the recreation department is vetted. So we have to do a background check to make sure that they're vetted. So before we let anybody volunteer, they have to be vetted. And you have 11 uh, computers, but is there one for like the, the lead person? What they do is they have a station, the monitor station, but they have 10 stations, and then they have a station where I, me, whoever it is, they'll be in and they can monitor everything on the firewall. So if something pop up, they can, so if the kids curse, it will pop up on the screen, they can see it. They can see the curse. And they can tell who, they can tell. So that person will be in the control room, he can tell everything, he can monitor everything. Now, um, for the kids, when they sign up, is there a fee, like if I go to play football? Or or right now, it's charged, I think, like $45. Um, but he said most of everything is taken care of the sponsors, but it is a steep. It's like forty, forty-five dollars. And it runs like a regular season. So it, it's the live club is like a baseball season or a, or a softball season. Um but I think what Florida right now that they, they first attended to start off with like ten kids and it got so big before they could ship the put the ship system down, they ended up taking like thirty kids. So what they did was they broke them up into ten and they had three sessions. So they had thirty kids instead of 10, and they just broke them up in a different age. And they come over every week and that's what they do. That's what I'm saying, so here, let's say you sign up 10 children, um, when would they, is there a set time when they would be? Um, How long they would play? He has, a, he has them set up coming in, he has one session coming in on when, like a, a weekday, because he's the only person that's on the counter right now, so he kind of has it set up right now, so he has to come in like on a Wednesday, and he has up two groups come in on Saturday morning. So one might come in from 9 to 11.30, and the other one might come in from like 12 to 3 or 12 to 2. That's what so it's an where we can have multiple, I mean, yeah, you can have more than 10 people, you can have. We can have them up and we can sign up with the kids and go 10 uh, every day of the week and we have a different session. And they're, they were staying there for how long? They were staying about two hours. They come in about two hours that day. So if they're for $45, they could come in for two hours a month that day. They would be how many times a week? They do it once, right now he's doing it one time a week, um, but in that two hours, um, they come in and they're teaching them the game, and then they get in, they get into, if we want to do a smaller session, and maybe two or three sessions, let them come in two days a week, or stay in longer doing hours or the weekend or whatever, we can do that because what they do is they just teach them how to play the game and do the competitive stuff uh, for a team. So they break them up. First they teach them the game, all the ins and outs of the game, and then they break them up into teams and then they let them compete against each other before they compete against other teams. And is it paid personnel that's in there or is it volunteer in there with them? Um, right now we can use our rec staff. Um, we have we just hired an assistant, Mr. Cisco Reed, so it could be me, it could be him, it could be uh, Lee. Um, you know, we all like we do now with the sports, we all kind of interchange the goal, who goes into that venue. Or uh, we can just simply get somebody. And he said he had a lot of volunteers that uh, a computer said that he trusts that be there for that. And how long does the session take? So for forty-five dollars, is this like a nine-week, twelve-week? Yeah, we can set it up into eight weeks or ten weeks of session, like a regular season. So we can set it up into a ten-week session. And what we'll do is 
we'll go along and look for him uh, and you're running like eight, ten weeks and we'll run it up. And he says it's getting bigger now, so the season might go longer. But he's looking at, um, he said after the pandemic, he's looking at about 30 teams. So he had to have set up all the matches and all that. So we'll be able to compete. Like I said, he can set us up to compete with Texas, Las Vegas, and we don't have to go anywhere. He calls us a dive, we don't have to pay for a referee. Sorry, I don't know. Have you ever
all four school districts want to do it. I think you said about like four of the school districts that have started it. So it's not it's starting to be recognized as a sport. It wasn't recognized as a sport. And not at all. UNC Southern has a uh, program. They have an academy down in Augusta, Georgia. It's called SCAD. And it's all, it's all about programming and gaming and stuff. So he went down there and he told us about it. So we were planning on going after COVID looking at it. But uh, it's, they have a SCAD academy. They'll teach you everything. And he said, everybody in this realm of e-gaming sports, they're helpful. They do stuff and they want everybody to learn because they want to get out. So they're in the process now of teaching everybody and want everybody to do it. He has Coker and USC something coming to help coach the kids. So that's, um, we we're reaching we're going to reach out to Coker and we'll reach out to him too to help, help them bring people over and help us teach the kids to play too. So everybody would pay to be on it, either pay or either they would have a sponsorship. Okay. Okay. Take care. Okay. Um, Brian, you had mentioned something about having a larger TV. I think is that the size you were talking about on there? Yeah. Um, only thing I think I'd love to add to the bid is there's no Xboxes or Playstations included. Um, and so if we're going to move forward with this, they, they, they said the other, so they have two Xboxes, two PlayStation. Yeah, right. yeah Rick Donald was, <clears throat> he, they were in the process because they just brought it, and they're processing out the uh, PS4. They came in the time, but they were about to spend some more money on the PS5. Well, we coming in, well, we coming in when the PS5s are good, and they're probably good for the next seven, eight years. Um, and they're about $500 a piece. So if you get four, it's about $2,000. Plus tax, it's about twenty-four hundred dollars. An extra controller, two extra controllers, is one hundred fifty dollars for each system. That's another three hundred dollars. And then games and accessories is about another thousand dollars. So you're looking at another thirty-seven hundred dollars. So all together, you're close to about forty thousand dollars, including the games and the PlayStation and the and the system. Like I said, a lot of this stuff once we get started. Um, it'll pay for itself because it ain't like you got to buy new equipment every year. Right. And the good thing about it, by Florence starting off, most of the stuff we get is stuff that they had to go back and upgrade. So the memory and stuff that we get is what Florence had to go upgrade on. So we have these systems for at least 10 years before we have to replace them. The money it makes is to go back into recreation or to go back into the hospitality. Hospitality. Yeah, good. Yeah, hospitality. Um, the money it makes it to get back to a place. I like the phrase. Yeah. 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 All right. Any more discussion? Sounds good. I think it's great. Do we need a Any more discussion? Any more questions? Okay. Do we have a motion? Yes. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we approve the esports proposal presented by uh, Director uh, Brandon Jack. For how much? For, oh yeah. Paper only says. But this amount on back, $36,077.51. And that doesn't include PlayStation. So. Yeah, if we do the PlayStation, it'll come up with another three bucks, another thirty-seven hundred dollars. It's not like a paper forty dollars. How would you say that? How would you get that? Under that five thousand dollar threshold, we can get that without your approval. Okay. For the okay, for so the extra PlayStation. So. so we go with this amount, and then we we'll just make a proposal for the five thousand. I'll second. Second. Uh, okay. Okay. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Seegers. Aye. Mr. Bacon. Mr. Nails. All right, so that it's clear. Uh, the motion has, I, I also, the motion has been approved for um, eSports proposal by Mr. Brandon Jett for the total of $36,077.51.
for the 10 stations and the 11 computer stations and everything that's on these sheets for the, for the eSports. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right, uh, new business, uh, trick or treat, treating uh, on Halloween. What does the city council desire on this? I think that the CDC is recommending that we do not have door to door trick or treating. Uh, but still, the decision is up to uh, city council to what we're to do. We are having the uh, Fright Fest on the square that day, so that may take the place of trick or treating, but some folks may still want to do it. So, what's, the, what's your desire with that? We've had Three or four phone calls already. People asking if we're going to allow trick or treating. Or not. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I'm saying, well, I just don't. It's just kind of like what you said. The mayor that she's putting the city mandating the way in the mayor. How are we going to stop families from trick or treating? I mean, if they want to go to the and most of them now travel and take the kids from a relative to relative. Or uh, they go to the organized activities. I mean, I don't see what our role would be in that. I'll follow that up, but I kind of agree with you, especially if we're allowing the chamber to host the event of the square. Um, makes no yeah. sense to even I think we can encourage everybody to come to the event on the square and wear your mask. <laughs> You're out of the way, but uh, again, as we said before, I mean, it's going to be hard to pull up a slice door and say, you know, you're not supposed to be trick or treating. I just don't think it's I think it's up to the individual. If they don't, then they can turn the line off and not have to. Please. Mayor and Council, I don't have a personal opinion uh, on this, but uh, we've gotten lots of calls and comments asking for the city's direction as to, and we always get every year, what time is trick or treat, what night is trick or treat, and with the COVID, I think it'd be best if we do make some sort of statement or y'all say something to um, say, you know, if you're gonna trick or treat, do it on the 31st from six to eight or whatever the time might be, um, just so that we have some direction to give folks. And I would include your idea about your life, and that's gonna, Oh, yeah, so, so I would suggest that if, uh, you know, the, the citizens of Garlington does want uh, someone coming to your house, just turn your outside light off, and um, if they're not invited to come, you don't have to answer the door and give me the candy. Um, as we've said, typically we suggest that trick-or-treating is from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m., 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., uh, but we'll be having Fright Fest, so we would like to invite everybody to come. It's free, um, and the rides are extra charges, but... You know, we'll have plenty of candy and stuff down there for everybody to trick or treat, fireworks and all there to keep your social distance. Uh, the heart, the, again, as Nancy has stated, that would be spread way out. Um, so, uh, you know. So if they want to trick or treat, we would suggest that the hours be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. But we would strongly suggest that they participate in the Fright Fest, where we'll have plenty of candy for everybody. Let's make it early in the six. Daylight. It'll still be daylight then. Yeah. Okay. That's good. All right, Lisa. wanted to clarify because she's saying earlier you want to do four to six or six to eight or five percent i just i just want to have some direction historically what have we done i don't ever remember I, I would say six to eight it's typically six to eight we've typically done six to eight i know that uh, sometimes the, the real little one yeah, will come out earlier that, that's why i was saying it out and i know the chamber's event is from two to seven thirty well, since so we've got plenty of activity for them, so I mean, you know, if I want to, if I want to stand at my door with a mask on at two o'clock and let people get candy, they can. That's my prerogative. But we would we would suggest that six o'clock, eight o'clock would be time frame. Well, let's do it. Let's just put it back. Just one second. I mean, because we want them to come down here, and we don't want them to go downtown. We 
kids at, at the 7.30 hour, right? right? So we wouldn't want them out and behind that. That's what I'm saying. So let's, um, that's why I'm saying five early. Five or at least five. Five, eight. five p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. We're, we're doing suggest oh, we're doing suggestions in Wednesday. Okay. Five p.m. to 8 p.m. <coughs> suggestions. Any uh, questions for the department heads? No. Do you have any questions for the department heads? As my fellow counselor pointed out to me, I should have made my comments at this point, but so I will repeat them. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any uh, council comments? Well, I'll comment so that on public record, the citizens will know that as of October 1st, their rates went up. We hear a lot that the, citizens, the, the council is not doing their job and so forth. Um, I try to make sure that everybody knows that this council, all of them sitting up here with me and myself, do all that we can to create a, a positive atmosphere for our town. And we're here to make sure that we correct any issues that are going on in our city. Uh, drainage problems we know that are an issue, roads being paved and so forth. Uh, lots of issues that we have that we're trying to always correct and make better, uh, bring more businesses in, more residents in. And uh, we're all working hard for that. Um, we're not here to, uh, to raise fees to hurt people, um, you know, and so, I ask that the citizens give us time to correct matters that have been going on for years. Uh, drainage issues are, have been passed along for a long time. We have made good efforts with the DOT. Uh, the news reporters do not always clarify, but a lot of our roads are DOT owned. The drains beside them are DOT owned. They collect the taxes on those DOT-owned roads. We do not collect the taxes on them. But our people, our department heads over here, Alex and the crew go out and clean these drains and uh, go out and try to make um, our roads and streets and drains better with what we have. We were told the other day that we have a back truck that they bought two years ago that the only other people in the area that have a back truck are Myrtle Beach, Sumter, and Columbia. Uh, we're not Myrtle Beach, Sumter, or Columbia. We're Darlington, which is a lot smaller, but we're strong. And we are out doing uh, a lot. Um, we have already approved, and they're starting, what's the date? They're going to start the road October next Monday. Next Monday, they'll be starting uh, Industrial pavement will be starting paving approximately 18, 18 roads, two roads, additional roads that will possibly be given to the county that they'll be taking care of, which will make 20 roads. The DOT has stepped up to the plate and is willing to take care of Will Street finally after all the collapses, which will make 21 roads. Uh, they're also going to take care of Russell Street, which will make 22 roads. In my understanding, Reed Street, and I think they just paved another one. So we. In the city of Darlington, before the end of this year, we will have about 24 roads paid. So I would say, if we do nothing else, the rest of the four years, we have accomplished a lot. But we will do a lot more the rest of the years, the three years that I'm in. Uh, because I believe in this council, we're working together to strive to make it better. We've already done and accomplished a lot. So I ask the citizens of Darlington, and then since we just spent $36,000 on eSports, we all believe in Facebook. I ask the citizens of Darlington to please be positive on Facebook because Facebook is seen everywhere. And when you talk about our town, talk positively about our town because I will be very blunt with you. I make $600 a month and I work 24-7 to do this job and I give it back. 
the people sitting up here with me, I don't know what they make. They make less than $600 a month clear. And this is what we do to devote our time and effort to make the town better. And we're making great progress, and I'm very proud to be on this council with me and, and work with all of y'all. And thank you for your efforts. Uh, I think we've just about agreed on everything um, as we voted for the last nine months. So I ask the citizens of Darlington to give us some more time and believe in what we do and step up to the plate with us and let's make our town the best it can be. I would like to thank NASCAR for coming into town a second time. Uh, also, uh, after I believe next year will be 25 years, if I'm not uh, wrong with that, of having a second race. So uh, a lot of great things are coming. Uh, so um, that's my comment. Thank you. All right. Uh, Executive session for the recreational ball fields uh, design. Uh, the city of Toronto may or may not vote at their closed executive session. Uh, do I have a motion to go into executive session? Thank you. We'll be out right back.